Professor Yann Lequin, who is uh, Vice President and Chief AI Scientist at Facebook. Silver Professor of Computer Science, Data Science, Neural Science, Electrical and Computer Engineering at New York University. He is also a member of the US Academy, National Academy of Science, the US National Academy of Engineering, and he is a CM Turing Award laureate in 2018 for his uh, contribution to AI. So welcome, Jan. Thank you to be here with us today. And then Professor Raj Reddy, who is a university professor of computer science and robotics and uh, Moza Bin Nasser, sorry for the pronunciation, chair at the School of Computer Science at Car Carnegie Mellon University. He is uh, also the founder and first director of the Robotic Institute of uh, Carnegie Mellon, very famous one, and we will uh, speak about this department uh, in the next round table. Uh, he is also a member of the United States National Academy of Engineering and of the Indian National Academy of Science. And he is ACM Turing Laureate for his contribution to uh, AI in uh, 94, I remember. So, welcome. Uh, I would like first to thank you, both of you, to be here today because it's not so easy to travel at this time. So, we really thank you. And uh, I would like to give you the floor. So, we will start with a two short presentation before the discussion. You can just sit or come. All right. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so, uh, I think this is a panel about the future of AI. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about the future challenges uh, on the way to making machines more intelligent and perhaps uh, towards human level AI. I don't use the word AGI because I don't think there is such a thing as general intelligence, so I don't, I don't like the term. Uh, but human level AI might be kind of a good concept. Or, or, um, so, the, the big question I think is, is how do we get machines to run like animals and humans? The problem with machine learning at the moment, and with AI in general, but machine learning in particular, is that uh, uh, machines are very inefficient in terms of learning uh, with the type, the paradigms of learning that we use today, namely re uh, supervised learning and reinforcement learning. The number of uh, training samples or trials that are necessary to run any kind of task is extremely large. Uh, and it could be because you know we, tra we train those machines from scratch, and so they don't have any background knowledge on which to uh, to kind of build uh, what they learn. Um, and, you know, today we cannot use either supervised or reinforcement learning to get cars to drive themselves safely. So how is it that a teenager can learn to drive a car in about 20 hours of practice without causing any crashes most of the time? Uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big mystery and there's a huge gap to, uh, to, to, to fill. Now, babies learn how the world works mostly by observation. In the first few months of life, they kind of figure out that there is things like uh, animate and inanimate objects, that there is gravity, and you know, they learn about uh, intuitive physics and things like this. Um, and we're not able to reproduce this type of learning in machines, and this seems to be the main type of learning that animals and humans use. So that's the big challenge, I think, of the next few years. And the reason it's a big challenge is that if we think about a potential architecture for sort of an autonomously intelligent system, so a system in which the intelligence is not determined by for a particular task, right? The, the machine is not trained to do a particular task, but it's trained in general, it trains itself, if you want, to uh, uh, solve particular tasks, a little bit like, uh, uh, you know, living things. Um, and we think about the necessary architecture for, for this to happen. There has to be, of course, a perception module, and that we can do with supervised learning. There has to be a very important piece that we don't know how to build yet, which is kind of a, a model of the world. And, and what's more, a configurable model of the world that the system, or the animal in this case, can uh, configure to handle the situation at, at, uh, at hand. What this model of the world is supposed to do is predict in advance what the, the consequences of the agent's actions uh, will be, and that would allow the agent to, to plan. Um, the behavior of the agent will be driven by some sort of cost function, you know, an objective. We all have one of those uh, at the bottom of our brain, in the visual ganglia, and it basically determines human nature and you know what kind of drives uh, our, our behavior. Um, so, if we believe in this architecture, the, the piece that we're missing today that we don't know how to build is, or with, with with machines, is this model of the world. How do we get machines to learn how the world works? 
Um, and so that's where this concept of self-supervised learning comes in. Self-supervised learning is the idea of uh, having a, a signal that's, for the sake of the example, let's say a video, and you show a segment of video to a machine and you ask the machine to predict what's going to happen next. If the machine has learned enough uh, abstract concepts about the world, it's going to be able to tell that they are you know, objects, that the world is three-dimensional, there are objects in the world, there are animate objects, there are uh, humans, and might be able to do a good job at abstracting the, 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 the concepts that will allow it to make some prediction about what's going to happen in the world. Um, and the second problem, so that's one, where, one ma major problem that we need to solve to get past the current limitations of AI systems. Uh, using self-supervised learning to get machines to represent the world and learn models of the world. The second one is uh, getting machines to learn to reason. With deep learning today, we, uh, we can get machines to learn perception, basically things that are sort of reactive, if you want. But how do we get machines to reason? And uh, what's more, how do we get machines to reason in such a way that is compatible with gradient-based learning or deep learning? Because we know how to get machines to reason using logic, but that's essentially incompatible with machine learning because it's very discrete, like you manipulate symbols with logic. Um, so we don't know how to do this. Um, um, here's a, a small um, animation and a video at the bottom. If it can be started, I'm not sure it can be started. Yes, it can. Uh, if you get a machine, if you train a, a neural net to predict what's going to happen in a video, what you get are blurry predictions, which you can see at the, at the top, or you can also see on the second column and the, the video at the bottom. Uh, this is a, a, a top-down view of uh, a highway and cars are moving and there is a predictive system that tries to predict where the cars are going to go. And if you ask the system to make a single prediction, it's going to make blurry prediction because it doesn't know among all the possible scenarios which one will occur and so it predicts the average of all the possible future scenarios and that's kind of a blurry image. So the question is how do we, the, the main technical question we have to solve now if we want machines to build models of the world or to learn models of the world is how to represent the certainty. And uh, the, the problem with this is that we know how to do this represent uncertainty for discrete uh, objects like text. Uh, Kugan Cho this morning talked about the large language model, so this is an example where we can't represent uncertainty uh, because the tokens that are being generated are discrete, so we can represent the distribution of the discrete tokens. But in things like video, we don't know how to represent good distributions over video frames. Um, so my solution to this is something called energy based models, which I'm not going to talk about. But then the next question is, uh, what, um, what are architectures for multimodal prediction? And my clicker doesn't work anymore. Can you switch to the next slide? Ah, here we go. Um, so there are really two kinds of architectures. One is uh, architectures that I would call latent variable models, or regularized latent variable models, which I'm not going to talk much about. And the second one is uh, called joint embedding architectures. And those architectures have become uh, kind of a hot host topic in uh, self-supervised learning of writing and computer vision these days. Um, so they, um, and sorry for the formatting mistakes, but the, uh, the, the basic idea of this is that you show an X and a Y, for example, a segment of the video and a continuation of that segment of the video, and you train a machine to produce representations in such a way that the representation of the following segment is predictable from the previous segment. Uh, in practice, people train this using uh, pairs of images rather than video, but uh, um, and there is all, all kinds of different ways to train those uh, contrasting methods and what's, I think, more exciting, non-contrasting methods. So this is, in my opinion, kind of the, the most interesting thing that has been happening in, uh, in AI over, or machine learning over the last, uh, I'd say, 10 years. So that's sort of going uh, back a, uh, quite a long time. Uh, I think this may be the ticket for uh, getting machines to learn hierarchical representations of the world and, and learn perhaps predictive models of the world uh, in, in some way. So th those models are very primitive at, at the moment and I'm not going to go into the details, details of how they work um, uh, at all and, and just conclude. Um, so I think self-supervised learning really is the, the future of, uh, of AI uh, to learn representations of predictive models. Uh, the big technical difficulty is how to handle uncertainty in the prediction because the world is not entirely predictable and can be intrinsically stochastic. Um, uh, you know, this will may allow uh, uh, machines to learn uh, war models of observation, a little bit like animals and human babies, perhaps. Uh, and the last question is, uh, you know, how, how do we get machines to do reasoning in that context? Uh, perhaps it's, uh, it's, we can sort of reduce this to some form of uh, energy minimization or inference uh, as is done in, in graphical models. Uh, but in any case, we'll have to uh, avoid symbols and logic and use things like vectors and 
continuous functions. And I'm sort of parroting uh, Jeff Hinton. Thank you.